What's up, YouTube world? Welcome to a little bit man gaming, where I got another WWE fan review for you. That right, no hate to play, hate the game bars. Anyway, <laughs> shout out to Tyrone Madness bars. What I got here is a WWE Monday Night Raw review. A little bit late, a little bit, just a little bit, but I wanted to bring you another review this time with my. WWE Championship belt, and yes, this is a real, as you can see, it's a real championship belt. But um, yes, I wanted to do another review. If you could hit that like, subscribe, and share button, also the notification button. But you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. It's totally your choice. With that being said, let's get into it. So these are my thoughts on on Monday last on last night's Monday Night Raw. They started off with AJ Styles, The Miz, and John Morrison doing a parody of, I, I, they said, uh, The Nightmare. It's like the, little, the Nightmare Before Christmas, but they call it The Nightmare Before TLC because this Sunday is the pay-per-view TLC. And basically, it was just Miz sitting in the chair, lights all off with this little spotlight on him. As he read a, he read a book, basically... Detailing what's going to happen this Sunday between WWE champ, WWE champion Drew McIntyre and AJ Styles. Of course, since the Miz is a heel, everything he read was all for uh, AJ Styles. He was reading how a in a story, you know, that rhyme too. It was a story that rhyme. He was saying how AJ Styles basically going to beat. Drew McIntyre with all the chairs, tables, and ladders, and basically he was gonna climb up to the la He was gonna climb up the ladder, grab the championship, and become the new WWE champion. But he said, if uh, typical healers from this, and he said if AJ Styles failed or won, or Drew McIntyre failed and won, either or whoever came out basically with the championship. He was going to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase and become the new WWE champion. And then, of course, AJ Styles, he took exception to that because he felt like that. He, I guess he said he's the one who wrote that book that Miz wrote. The, I mean, Miz wrote. The Miz read. And he felt like he that was a part of the script. You also had, I forgot to mention too, you also had John Morrison. He was over there acting like... Uh, Drew McIntyre with a kilt and all that type of stuff on, but he was like saying a line from Braveheart. I think that's Braveheart and Mel Gibson. They had him looking like that too, but they, you know, they tell him that that was the wrong line. That's not the lines. He just supposed to be sounding like Drew McIntyre, not Braveheart. But it uh, got everything that got interrupted because the Miz and and AJ Styles started bickering at each other. Then Seamus came out. Got in uh, AJ Styles' face, and I guess the the whole notion was that later on in the night it was going to be Seamus versus AJ Styles, but as we all know, it's because of K Fab. That that was the match that actually started the night. So the first match of the night was AJ Styles versus Seamus. That match I didn't really think it was going to be good. I thought it was going to be sitting there. Just looking at it, get a little bored and look at my phone. But that match actually held me in. It was actually an interesting match. They, I like how they still playing up the fact that Seamus might betray uh, Drew McIntyre because you know he want to be champion. They also throwing it's also like you know they also throwing in there it could be Keith Lee. You no know, rumors suggest it might actually be Keith Lee who gets uh, betrayed. I mean, Keith Lee, who actually portrays Drew McIntyre. Um, but, yeah, they just, throughout that match between AJ Styles and Seamus, they kept working it over that Seamus was going to betray Drew McIntyre. Then, eventually, Seamus suffered, thanks to two kicks to the back of his leg, Seamus suffered, what it, I think it was a leg injury. And he kept, and now he hopped, he was hobbling throughout the whole match. Uh they worked it over, you know, AJ Styles working the leg injury. Seamus tried to cause a, a similar injury to, I think it was a, either a leg injury or a face injury. He was trying to work an angle to himself, but the leg, they made it, you know, the leg injury was too much. And he tried to take, uh, uh, Seamus tried to take AJ Styles to the uh, top rope, but because of his leg injuries, uh, AJ Styles was able to 
slip out of it, kicks to Amos in the back of his legs, which caused him to hit the for his back to hit the mat. And AJ Styles quickly went into the cover, and because of his bad leg, you know, since it was a his legs was in the air, AJ Styles pinned him down that way so that he had to use his legs to kick out because his legs was bum. <clears throat> he couldn't do it. Excuse me. So therefore, Samus won the match. And then they cut to the back. They cut to a segment backstage, which it was supposed to be earlier before the show started. They showed the Hurt Business, which is Bobby Lashley, MVP, uh, Selton Benjamin, and Cedric Alexander. <clears throat> they showed them in the. They showed them basically. They whole model that they the Hurt Business. They like the a group of bullies. They were supposed to originally be. The Nation of Domination uh, Part Two. They was they were they was going to bring that back. The whole setup to the Hurt Business was that they had members of the Nation of Domination and kept coming back to talk to them. On di every Monday was a different member of the Nation of Domination, and it was supposed to lead to them becoming the new the second iteration of the Nation of Domination. <clears throat> but those plans got scrapped, and they just became the Hurt Business. So they just, all they do is go backstage and just, they, you know, they bully people, not just wrestlers, but they bully just, you know, crew members or just ra and random people backstage. And tonight was no exception. Last night was no exception. They were bullying just somebody for eating uh, Rip, Matt Riddles, or as they call him on the show now, just Riddle. He has had this thing where he created his own donuts called Bro Nuts. And they got mad and bullied him, bullied the dude for uh, eating it, and poured milk all over him and stuff. And basically cut a problem about how they was gonna uh, beat Jeff Hardy and Jeff Hardy and them and, and Jeff Hardy. I guess it was the uh, Hurt Business versus Jeff Hardy in the New Day, and they did a promo about that. And then actually, that actually ended up being since that was the the promo was supposed to be earlier in the night. The next match actually was Jeff Hardy in the New Day. Versus the Hurt Business. <clears throat> and then anybody, to be honest with y'all, I didn't really watch the match. I know, I know, right? How I'm a fan, but I don't watch the match. The match itself is the reason, the reason why I didn't watch it. Because as a fan, I've been watching this same type of match every week. It's the same. It's the same people in the same match, just in different ways. You got, you had the tag team. They fought with, they fought with the tag team titles twice and. For the tag team titles twice in two weeks. Then you have they had one on ones with the New Day losing the one on ones. The then now yesterday it was basically the hurt business of Bobby Lashley, Selton Benjamin, and Cedric Alexander versus Kofi Keystone, uh, Xavier Woods, and Jeff Hardy. And still it was the stale same result. They end up the New Day end up losing to the hurt business. So the hurt business has been on a roll. Like I think I don't think the hurt business lost a match. In about three to two weeks. <clears throat> so then we move on to the next match, which was Lana versus Nia Jax. Now that match, I had to say, I'm more inter I was more interested in that match than uh, than the, the New Day match, just because it was a it was about basically not uh, Lana being bullied for not for nine consecutive weeks. Nia Jax for some reason and never it was never really it was never really explained, but it was only is basically they try to say it was because she didn't think Lana belonged in the WWE because Lana don't have no ring experience. She's not as good of a wrestler as they are and you know, the women's champion and all that type of stuff. They think she just basically a waste of space. So they've been trying to bully her into quitting, but she won't quit. And then on the last several weeks Lana, since the Survivor Series, I would say, Lana, or no, actually a couple of weeks even before that, Lana's been getting these fluke victories. Like, she won the, the the match to determine the final competitor for the for the Raw Women's Survivor Series team. Lana won because she basically eliminated, She they thought she was eliminated, and the last person... The last person that, that eliminated somebody, they thought they won the match. And then Lana comes out of nowhere and throws them out the ring. And she won. I think it was Natalia. Yeah, I think Natalia thought she won the match. And Lana threw her out the ring to reveal that she was never eliminated. <clears throat> After that, she got the fluke win at Survivor Series. Where, because 
Nia Jax and Bianca Belair was fighting at Survivor Series. They was fighting outside the ring. They both got counted out. And since Lana was the only uh, member left on e on either team, I think she was on. Yeah, she was on Raw. It it was only one member of Raw left, which was um, on SmackDown, which was Bianca Belair, and it was Nia Jax and Lana on Team Raw. And since both Bianca Belair and Nia Jax got counted out, Lana was the only person left that was still legal. In the match, therefore, she was declared the winner because she was the sole survivor. Nia Jax has been upset with her ever since then because he keep getting these fluke victories. And then she kept, and then she was winning matches with Oscar and tag team matches. And then she actually got, a, then last night, she got a fluke victory again over Nia Jax because the match itself, I talked about this because the match itself didn't really last long. Because basically it was just Nia like basically man, woman handling Lana. And then Lana actually did like a a, a, a her karana into the into the ropes to which, into the tumbrickles, uh, uh, I should say. Which, which Lana tried to powerbomb Nia off of, but she couldn't because she didn't have the strength. So she, climbed, she made uh, Nia like trip herself up on the ropes. She made and then she like double uh, foot stomp uh, Nia in the chest, which allowed her to pin Nia one two three. They didn't take her and Sion Blazer didn't take uh, exception to that. So the next segment after that was just them beating after the match. They just beat up Lana real bad to where she was injured. And the next segment after that was that you know she had to be put into the ambulance, and they said that due to the fact that this is the money, this the go home Monday Night Raw before TLC, she was too she was too injured to compete at this uh, Sunday's TLC. So therefore, it kind of made everything mute because you did this whole storyline. You did this whole storyline about building not building up Lana and how she is gonna. Be the one, she's gonna have this amazing victory. And it, it was like they was building up the fact that her and Oscar was gonna defeat Nia and then for the championships to, to cap off this little build up for Lana. But now all of a sudden you, you do a 180 and you have Lana now just injured. And now Oscar gotta find a new tag team partner, which it might be, it might be Charlotte Flair. She might come back to be Oscar's tag team partner. It, or it could it could be somebody else, but it's most likely gonna be Charlotte because she's due to be back now. But yeah, so after that, they had a uh, a Elias a Elias uh, segment, which I watched because rumors was going around that um, the uh, right uh, Jackson Riker, who who was a part of this group called the Forgotten Sons. Before earlier this, I think it was earlier this year. Doing, you know, when that Black Lives Matter movement was like prominent, it was do, it, you know, it was at its peak or beginning to reach its peak. He said something. I guess this was off script too. This wasn't like something he was he was supposed to say. This is something he said on Twitter that wasn't uh, part of a script that was a, he was wasn't meant to be said to build a story. He said this as himself, his real life self. Of his personal opinion. And I guess it was something about Donald Trump. I don't know. And they got taken off air. You know, Jackson Riker and the Forgotten Sons. They were taken off air. Because of Jackson Riker's comments. And they haven't really been seen since. And this was like early in the year. This was like. <clears throat> I want to say. March or April. They haven't been seen yet since March or April. And uh. March, April, a little bit after that. I'm trying to. I'm sorry. I, I try to remember, but it was it was around the time. It was either it was either March, April, May, or June. One they haven't been seen for a while. It was no, it was even rumored that Jackson Riker was actually going to get fired <clears throat> because they didn't know they was going to keep him or not. But they end up dead. And now the new rumor was that he was going to get kept, but now he was going to be on Raw with. <clears throat> With Elias, and I wanted to see was that rumor true because it was right. It was just a rumor as soon as last week, even this Saturday and Sunday, that he was going to be fired. And it turns out Monday night he was actually with Elias. Now he's got this new thing with Elias, and I guess now because the whole thing with Elias is every time he tried to come out and do the performance, somebody's always interrupting him. 
and a lot has got this new so this new album called the universal truth and he you know Jackson Riker said that the universal truth set him free and enlightened him so now he's there to protect the lives make sure that he's able to do his performance to enlighten the world and <clears throat> our truth comes out in his comedy fashion and interrupts and tell him that he didn't mean to interrupt he didn't he wanted to apologize for interrupting him on main event. And then, you know, Elias informed him, well, you're kind of, inter if you're apologizing for that, but you're kind of interrupting now, too. So then, you know, all truth commonly just stands there and he tells him, oh, I'm not trying to interrupt. Then, you know, he goes to plays, but then the people who want the 24-7 championship comes out of chase, all true. And Jackson Riker just lays them to waste and pretty much that was it. You know, our lives, you know, they, our lives just ended the segment with them, with Jackson Rocky demolishing the people that want our truth 24 7 championship while our truth escaped. Then we got to another match, which was Keith Lee versus The Miz and John Morrison in the handicap match. Now, like I said, they've been, Keith Lee, when they brought him to Raw from NXT, it, it was building him up like he was going to be a main event player on Monday Night Raw. Then all of a sudden they they couldn't decide whether he was going to win. They was protect. They were doing the usual protection where either he could the match was never going to get finished or he never got pinned or they. But he when the match did get finished, he was always winning the match. He even won a match against Randy Orton. He had this big push going. Then all of a sudden now he's losing matches, and it seems like what people are fearing that when they bring people up from NXT, they just they don't. They don't use them and push them like how NXT pushed them. And that's the one thing I do like about NXT. NXT, when they push you, they push you. And, you know, they give you that push. They give you that spotlight. But it's like when you get up to the main roster, as from coming from NXT, you're not even give, you're not given the credit because you're, you're awesome to watch on NXT, but then you're not awesome to watch on the main roster. So that's kind of what's happened to Keith Lee here. He's... Um, not being utilized correctly, and then you know, sent, then the the rumors that they were sending him, and I guess it's not rumors. They said it was confirmed that they sent they sent him and some more runners down to the performance center to perfect to uh, continue to perfect their craft. And it was just the big headline was that they added Keith Lee to that, even though he's pretty much a solid athlete, a big man who like Bam Bam Bigelow could be a, uh, could do high flyer type stuff. Um. But yeah, the the handicap match was as you, as you would think. Keith Lee being a big guy, he was he was taking punches and stuff. It took and says John Morrison and the Miz are uh, smaller guys compared to him. Some of his some of their punches and kicks wasn't registering. You know, he had the big mad hawk up where he would just take the punch and look, give them the mean money and just start demolishing them. But at the end, it came down to a uh, comical pin. They had to both basically. Both jump up. They had a like dog pile on him to uh, get the pin, and therefore it kind of confirms that they're not gonna. It kind of gives their impression they're not gonna push him, or they're not pushing him at the moment because they maybe they think he's not ready. But it is what it is. But I just I like Keith Lee, and I just hope that they don't, you know, ruin Keith Lee. So then you got. You got uh, Ricochet versus Mace. Mace represents the group Retribution. And like I said in my last video, Retribution is a stable that needs to start winning matches. They need to start pushing them because what's the whole point of having a, uh, a stable about people that want to make a change, that's trying to disrupt the system if they're just losing matches and not even cause chaos and destruction anymore. So they look, that match right there I wasn't really into but the but the fact that Mace got uh, the victory is so that they're trying to do something with them, but still they still feel like the uh, retribution is a uh, mid card act, and that's don't that never seems right because any staple you you know DX, NWO, you know uh, Evolution, you know even Legacy, all those was you know, even uh, not even just Legacy, but. Uh, uh, the Nexus, they was all main. They was all messing with main inventors. They were trying to disrupt the system by messing with the main inventors that made the most impact. Yet they not doing that with retribution. 
But yeah, it was Ricochet versus Mace of Retribution, and Mace ended up getting the victory, which was, uh, I think, the first victory they got in the last two weeks. I think the last past two weeks they have gotten losses. But they finally got another victory again, so they're back on the victory path. Then um, Bray Wyatt cut a promo in the ring. It was supposed to be like the Firefighter Fire Funhouse. Bray Wyatt was giving his Firefighter Fire Fire Funhouse friends some um, a tour around the Thunderdome until Randy Orton came on, came on cutting the promo with Bray Wyatt talking about how you know Bray Wyatt got the best of him last week when he was only he was only fighting Mister Rogers Bray Wyatt. Then at the end. When Randy Orton went for the pin, cause he hit uh, Bray Wyatt with RKO. He went for the pin, but the lights cut out, and it, it was revealed that Randy Orton now, instead of pinning the Bray Wyatt, the Mister Rogers Bray Wyatt, he's pinning the the crazed fiend monster Bray Wyatt, and they, the Bray Wyatt just attacked him. It was a no, it was a no disqualification, uh, no no contest. But this week, Randy Orton cut how he he uh, he gave him his prize, how he got the better of him. Um, you know, blah blah blah, and then they said, "Well, so, you know, this Sunday I'm gonna have to face the fiend, but I I want to play a game since you like playing games. I want to play a game because you're not gonna get the better of me tonight, and on Sunday. So he challenged Bray to a game of hide and seek, and uh, Bray White being deranged and delusional as he is, he accepted, and it spent most of the the rest of the night, and I think this was like the third hour in the night, you know, with Bray Wyatt basically just looking for Randy Orton, running into people backstage who, who were just talking to him as he was asking, have you seen Randy Orton? And um, Retribution cut a, cut a promo about how Mace Wynn makes um, Rick, uh, not Rick and Shay, but Mustafa Ali's uh, truth known. Then it was Dana Brooke versus Sonya Blazer of Team Nia and Sonya with um, with the match ending in DQ because I think Dana was getting the, the better of, uh, of Sonya Blazer and then Nia just got involved and uh, hit Dana, uh, Dana Brooke was called to DQ, uh, DQ and then everybody you know that Nia and Sonya have um, pissed off came back like you have Mandy uh, Rose. She came down, started beating them with kendo sticks. Uh, Oscar came down. You know, he, he basically double team and beat up uh, Sonya and Nia, sent them right to the backstage. Then you had a promo with Husky Harris. I um, mean, Husky. Uh, Husky Harris, but Husky the pig. And the pig boy talking to R True as, once again, Bray Wyatt was looking for Randy Orton. That segment right there really wasn't. Like I won't give it. It wasn't. It was okay just for, for comedy purposes. And then you had, uh, which we had. Then you got another promo backstage with Randy Orton. I mean Bray Wyatt, finding the room with his rocket chair and just sitting there rocking, and it made him somewhat become his uh, cult leader, Bray Wyatt. So, so he was he got into a little trance, you know, rocking back and forth to his. Rocket chair, thinking about his cult leader self, and Red Yard coming off in the darkness and beating up on Bray Wyatt. This promo, now this part, I wish they just would have actually gotten to instead of all the other stuff that wasn't really, that wasn't really fun. Because this promo, this little backstage segment right here, was the ice on the cake. It actually was was one of the best things that happened tonight. Was Randy Orton beat up on Mister Rogers Bray Wyatt, threw him in the um, threw him in his box. And lit the pour gasoline on it and lit the box on fire. You know, Randy Orton, he's he's saying he's the um, most devilish son of a sob. You know, so he's uh, he he wanted to look the devil in the eyes and tell him that the the most devilish person is finally come home. And um, tonight, last night, was his chance to prove it. You know, so now Randy Orton, he he's live he's reveling. He's in his um and the fact that he just set Bray Wyatt on fire in his box. But then all of a sudden the box opened back up and this time is uh it once again it's not Brett Mr. Rogers Bray uh Wyatt, it's the fiend Bray Wyatt. And once again, just like last week, 
Bray Wyatt uh, puts the manual claw on Randy Orton and just punt 